somehow harness this lightning, channel it into the flux capacitor. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is D Scene in Daylight, where we explore the time circuits of electronics. It's really hot in here. Hold on. How does Michael J. Fox do it? So in today's video, we're going to work on something that I really wanted to do since I was a kid, and that's make a flux capacitor. Of course, we're going to build on the knowledge that we gained last time from using some resistors and a transistor as a current source to drive a bunch of LEDs in series. We're going to use that as our chasing LEDs as part of that flux capacitor where they all come in from the outside and work towards the center. Now, if you've come across this video looking for an exact replica of the flux capacitor, that's not really what we're doing here. We're taking uh, some electronics and we're making a chasing LED circuit. And what's unique about this circuit is we're not just turning LEDs on and off. Originally, I had the idea to use a 555 timer and a CD4017 uh, to just turn the LEDs on and off. But what we're going to do is use the Arduino Nano and use its pulse width modulation function to ramp up the LED quickly and then ramp it back down, making kind of like a strobing effect. And of course, you can do whatever you want. Take my software and tweak it to make it do whatever you want. So with all that being said, I've got all the components laid out on the bench here. We're going to take a look at the physical items. We'll do a time-lapse build. And then, of course, we'll look at the electronics, which is the main purpose of this video, and look at the firmware. All right, then you can take this and make your own. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's talk about some of the components that we're going to use to put this thing together. I have a case here that is ABS or polyvinyl chloride. I don't really know, but the original one... Uh, goes for about 250 bucks online, so a little bit out of our budget. This one is not the exact size. This one's about 12 inches by 10, and I had to kind of shrink the window down uh, so and reposition some of the uh, vacuum relays, the three posts on the flux capacitor. Might look a little weird, but you know, the idea here is to just make LEDs chase. So I've already gone ahead and marked out where my window's gonna go. I have some marks here for where my holes are going to go for the corner radius, and I'm using this hole saw, which is 67 millimeters in diameter, okay? I have no idea if it's going to look good or not, but that's what I'm going to use. We have our plexiglass here, and then we have our uh, window strip, weather stripping, window mounting stuff. I don't know what you call it, uh, but that's going to go around here. On the inside, this case came with a backing plate. So attached to the backing plate, we're going to have our main PCB, we're going to have our Arduino Nano that mounts to that. Then I think on a separate board we will mount our transistors and driver circuitry uh, for LEDs. Now on top of that, we're going to have this top plate. And the top plate is where our flux capacitor stuff is all going to mount. So we've got a bunch of LEDs. I think I will do like four per, four or five per LED acrylic rod. The acrylic rods will go one, two, and three. Okay, and those are gonna mount to a rubber bumper just like this. So I got a rubber bumper at my hardware store, drilled a hole in it. I have a one quarter 20 by I think two inch bolt here. I've taken the acrylic rod, heated it up, bent it, and done the same thing here, flattened it out, drilled a hole through it, and it mounts pretty nicely. And then we have a spark plug wire, which is going to, I'm not gonna press it down because it's really hard to get off the uh, threads, but it fits right onto that one quarter 20 bolt. And that will all get put together like so. So we'll go through that process. And to lay everything out, I just kind of mock this up in Photoshop where everything's gonna fit. The boards obviously go underneath and the spark plug wires will go here. And of course, no flux capacitor would be complete without a Dymo label maker with red tape. Let's get on to the build. Okay, so we have an Arduino Nano Every and uh, the pinout is a little bit different than the, the standard Arduino Nano. I didn't know that, so I had to change a couple PWM pins around, but this is the corrected schematic. We have uh, 12 volts coming in, okay? 12 volts here. We have a bypass capacitor that I've thrown on there just for good measure. I'm sure the board already has one on there. Um, but we have uh, five PWM signals that are available on this chip, and we're using all of them to drive our LEDs. So we have a concentric ring around the uh, flux capacitor outside LEDs, which I'm calling uh, PWM1, and then concentrically inward, two, three, four, and five. Those signals are all sequenced from D5, D6, D9, D10, and then I made a mistake. I had to actually change pin 14 all the way back to D3. So I've disconnected this one and used this as PWM LED5. 
So the way I'm doing this is I'm ramping up the PWM signal quickly on each LED string and then kind of tailing it off to make it look more interesting. The other thing to note is that these are 20 milliamp LEDs that I had in my parts bin and they're super bright at 20 milliamps. So I actually limited the current to 10 milliamps to make it you know, more pleasing to the eye and, and shows up a little better on the camera here in my videos. So I've actually got five of these LED driver circuits and let's just look at one of them. So we're using two diodes here as a voltage reference. So we develop about 0.7 volts across this diode, 0.7 volts across this diode. And we have a current limiting resistor uh, for this. So I'm using 1K. Uh, so the remainder of the five volts coming from the Arduino Nano, okay, remember it's PWM, so it's turning on and off, on, off, on, off to control the brightness of the LED. When it is on, we get 1.4 volts dropped across these two diodes. That's our voltage reference. All the rest of the voltage is dropped across this resistor right here. So why are we doing that? Because it's convenient, okay? We have a base emitter diode inside of this transistor that subtracts 0.7 volts, minus 0.7, okay? So essentially one of these goes away and at the emitter, we're left with 0 0.7 volts across this resistor, all right? And this limits the amount of current that can flow through this collector emitter side of the transistor. And from Ohm's law, uh, we can determine what current that is. So current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Current is equal to 0 0.7 divided by, I've chosen a 68 ohm resistor, which is approximately equal to 10 milliamps. So yeah, that's how the thing works. And we can control the uh, duty cycle of the pulse with modulated signal to control the brightness. Um, I'm actually ramping from zero up to a value not 255 because even that's too bright. I think I'm um, only going up to like uh, 24. Okay, so about 25% duty cycle is maximum brightness for uh, the application. So let's take a look at the software. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we define our PWM channels that we're going to use. Um, I set the number of channels to five. We're going to use those in some loops later. And I create an array of the P PWM channel pins that we're using. So from our schematic, we're using D5, D6, D9, D10, and D3. Then we want to set all of those PWM uh, channels to outputs. So I just run through each uh, value in that array, okay, from index zero to the maximum number of channels, which is five. Uh, you can see the index here, and I loop through that, set them all as output, and we're ready to go. When we get to the main loop, we cycle through each ring. So the outside ring, then the next one in concentrically until we get to the middle. And there are five channels, so we're gonna do all of this stuff inside uh, for each of those five. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to fade in, okay, from a brightness starting at zero up to our maximum brightness. You can see we're incrementing here with this plus plus. In order to change the pulse width modulation value, we use analog right to the particular channel with its index and the brightness level that we're looping through. We delay for one millisecond, which makes a pretty quick ramp up. And then after we go to max brightness, we pop out of this loop and we delay for five milliseconds so that we can stay on for a little bit. It doesn't look like a pulse. After that, we fade out. Okay, so we're starting at max brightness and we're decrementing this time till we get to zero. And we do that again with an analog right to the particular channel we're working on and uh, we set that brightness. Then we delay for eight milliseconds this time because I kind of want to fade out a little bit instead of uh, we're, we ramped up really quickly here with a one millisecond delay. Once we're done with that particular channel, okay, we pop back to the top of this loop and we work on, instead of index zero, we work on index one of the array up there. Then once we go through all five uh, rings of LEDs, we pop out of that and we come back up to the top of the loop and the cycle just repeats uh, forever. That's pretty much it for the software, but you could take this and you could change the timing, the delays here to make it faster or you know stay on longer, fade out slower, you can do whatever you want, um, and also change the brightness by playing with this value, okay?
All right, here's our completed circuit board. We have our Arduino Nano, which is the brain. And we've got our program report here over USB that um, I've kind of been playing around with the different timing for the LEDs. 12 volts coming in. On our header here that connects to our LED array, the orange is 12 volts going to the anode of each LED rings, which we'll take a look at in a second. There are five of those. We have five PWM uh, signals coming from the Arduino Nano. And uh, these resistors go to the base, which are part of the bias circuitry for these two diodes. And then we have our emitter resistors, okay, that set the current for each leg here at about 10 milliamps. And you can see that we're actually working now. On the rear side, you can kind of see how that ring that I was talking about with the LEDs actually functions. Each one of these is connected to the anode of this LED. The cathode connects to the anode of the next one, and the cathode connects to the anode of the next. And then all of those LEDs come together at our source here, which is our 12 volts coming in from the wall, okay? And by triggering each one of these sequentially, we can have that strobing effect going from the outside to the center. All right, and now I think we're ready to button everything up. All right, well that wraps up this episode of Driving LEDs. So hopefully you watched the previous video. Uh, there's a little more theory on how to drive LEDs in series and parallel instead of just using a standard current limiting resistor. So we put that into practice here uh, with our flux capacitor. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. One thing that I would change is probably to try to find a, a, an enclosure that is a little more square because you can't really see everything that's going on inside of the box with the spark plug wires. Um, but I think it turned out pretty good and it's going to end up on the shelf over here as a nice decoration and some eye candy for people to look at. So in any event, do you have plans to make a flux capacitor or have you done something similar in the past? I would love to hear about it in the comments down below or in the Element 14 community at element14.com. Links are all down in the description and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Yeah.